Hello and welcome to Philosophy Vibe, the channel where we discuss and debate different philosophical ideas. Today we're going to be focusing on some ethics and looking into moral realism. Excellent. Now, one of the major debates in ethics and moral philosophy is the realism versus anti-realism debate. Moral realism is the position that morality is objective. That is to say, there exist objective moral truths in the world that we can discover. These truths are independent of anyone's beliefs. They are facts in and of themselves. Whereas moral anti-realism holds that there are no objective moral values or moral truths. These do not exist. And all morality is, is just subjective personal belief or an expression of one's emotion. In this video, we're going to be focusing on moral realism, looking at how strong it is as a theory, as well as some of the challenges it faces, and if it can overcome these challenges. But just before we get into it, the reason you clicked on this video is because you have an interest in philosophy. You have an inquisitive mind, you always want to learn and you value education. Of course, this is who this channel caters to. As such, it gives me great pleasure to say that today's video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. Brilliant is where you learn by doing. It is an educational platform with thousands of interactive lessons in maths, data analysis, programming and AI. The greatest part of Brilliant is that it is designed to be uniquely effective. Their first principles approach helps you build understanding from the ground up. Each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving that let you play with concepts, a method proven to be six times more effective than just watching lecture videos. Plus, all content on Brilliant is crafted by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft, Google and more. I like to sharpen my mind sometimes and challenge myself with a maths course. Brilliant's comprehensive range of maths courses are built for learners of any level. Whether you want to brush up on the fundamentals or challenge yourself with advanced concepts. Perhaps your interest is in data, computer programming or AI. Brilliant.org aims to help learners develop critical thinking and problem solving skills in a fun and engaging way. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash philosophy vibe or scan the QR code on the screen or you can click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. And with that, let's get back to the video. Moral realism falls under the cognitive side of metaethics. Cognitivism is the belief that moral language is truth apt. When one makes a moral statement like stealing is wrong, this is a fact-based statement and it is either factually right or wrong. On the other side, we have non-cognitivism. This holds that moral language is not subject to cognition. Moral language is not truth apt. So when one makes a moral statement, it is not right or wrong. There is no factual basis to a moral statement. It is just the expression of a personal sentiment, not an objective fact. Typically, Moral anti-realism falls under non-cognitivism. The only exception is error theory. This theory claims that moral language is truth apt. However, all moral claims are false, which is an anti-realist position. And so, moral realism holds that moral language is truth apt and at least some of it is true. Right, this makes sense. So, the strengths of moral realism are evident. If we hold that moral truths exist, that moral language is fact-based and has truth to it, this explains why we as humans are so passionate about morality, why we care so much. It's not just some arbitrary feeling an individual has, but there is actual moral truth attached to the universe and to the human experience. It also means that moral behaviour can be governed and regulated as there is a truth that covers us. And we can all safely say evil acts are wrong in and of themselves and not just down to personal sensibility. 
And so if there is moral objective facts independent of human emotions, then we can be held morally accountable for our actions. We can be considered morally right or morally wrong as an objective truth. Moral statements can then be logically scrutinised and logically evaluated and we as people have a moral truth to aim for. Our actions, the way we live, the choices we make, these carry a deeper sense of meaning because of it. Granted, however, we need to look at what you claim to be a moral fact and how this looks compared to other actual objective facts. Let's take scientific facts. These are discoverable, measurable, testable and can be reported as facts. We can see the outcomes empirically so they become objective facts. Moral language does not behave like this. Sure, I can say stealing is wrong or unprovoked physical assault is morally wrong. But how can you prove that? How can you show someone that something is wrong? You can't. Morality does not function like a science. You can only express your distaste for an action or behaviour. You cannot show an objective fact. I disagree. I think moral statements can be empirically discoverable. If someone was to say, as you said, unprovoked physical assault is morally wrong, then when we see or experience this happen, we can empirically verify that claim. You can see the results of physical assault. The victim was in pain. The victim was traumatized. You can look at this and can deduce that this action is in fact wrong. This is an empirical method to test the truth of a statement. Right, so this is the naturalism cognitive position. You are taking natural facts about the world and assigning a moral status. So in this case, pain is linked to morally bad. Yes, I agree with that. And I suppose in that case, you could also equate pleasure with morally good. Yes. The thing is, naturalism faces some huge philosophical problems. One of which is the open question argument. Proposed by the philosopher G.E. Moore, he claimed that whenever one tries to use a natural fact to explain a moral fact, it is always an open question if these two are synonymous. For example, a triangle is synonymous with a shape with three sides. If someone says, I know I'm looking at a triangle, but am I looking at a shape with three sides? You are right to say they don't understand the concept. Correct. But is pleasure synonymous with morally good? To ask, I know this is pleasurable, but is it good? Is a completely fair and reasonable question, because not everything that is pleasurable is good. Likewise, to equate pain with morally bad is also an open question. One can always ask, I know X is painful, but is X morally bad? Again, a perfectly fair question that betrays no conceptual confusion. So any attempt to reduce natural properties to moral ones is always an open question. Therefore, trying to take a scientific approach to morality will always run into the open question argument challenge and inevitably fail. I see. From there, we also have the is ought problem proposed by the philosopher David Hume, which claims that to derive an ought, an action-based behaviour, based on an is, a natural fact about the world, always has a huge gap that cannot be bridged. So to say stealing is taking someone else's property, therefore you should not steal, there's a massive gap between the natural fact, the is, and the ought, you should not steal. Again, based on these arguments, I think moral realism inevitably fails. Okay, fine, but the objections you've put forward only apply to naturalism. If moral realism focuses on non-naturalism, I think it can escape these objections. How so? Even though G.E. Moore raised the open question argument, he done this as a moral realist. G.E. Moore favoured non-naturalism. So, the open question argument showed the problems with naturalism. But if we take non-naturalism, we don't have to try to equate morally good or bad with natural properties like pleasure or pain. Nor do we need to worry about bridging the gap between natural facts and moral truths. 
As non-naturalism claims, morality comes from non-natural properties. Okay, so what exactly do we mean by non-natural properties? The most common belief would be a moral intuition, an innate understanding that allows us to recognize what is morally good and what is morally bad. We just know and can recognize moral truth based on this moral intuition. We know cold-blooded murder is wrong. We know unprovoked physical assault is wrong. Our intuition just sees this and recognizes it. So moral truth is objective, but unlike empirical senses, it is our intuition that discovers it. But here we are faced with so many metaphysical problems. Like, where does this intuition come from? Do we need a God for this to work? for morality to be programmed in us. Wouldn't this raise a number of other issues you need to first address before moral realism can even stand on its own? Not necessarily. Sure, a god can be argued for, a being with perfect moral knowledge and a lawgiver who gives us the intuition, but we don't have to have a god in place. One can see a moral intuition as an evolutionary development, Similar to how we have natural reflexes, we stick our arms out when we fall, or we naturally have a fear of the dark, or we naturally feel repulsed by rotten food. A moral intuition could just be this evolutionary development, this moral reflex, in order to further the human species and our societies. To me, that seems perfectly reasonable, and the truths it discovers would still function as objective facts in that way. I think there's a lot to unpack here. You've made a lot of assumptions, so I'm not taking them all as a given, but I don't want to derail this discussion too much, so let's just focus on the intuition for a second. If the moral realist claims that moral truth is objective and can be discovered through an innate moral intuition, this does not function like any other fact-finding way. Why should we treat moral truths with such a special criteria? Every other objective truth is found via empirical methods, yet for morality, we must appeal to almost a magic intuition. It seems far more reasonable to deny the existence of moral truths. No, I don't agree with that. There are plenty of truths that don't rely on empirical evidence, but rely on intuition. Really? Well, yes, I would say all mathematical truths which are considered objective truths, rely solely on a priori knowledge. That is, they rely solely on mental faculties, understanding concepts and reaching truths. You can't display mathematics like you can a physical object. You can't show someone a physical formula like you can show them water boiling. So if I said to you, show me the number pi, show me 3.14159265359, show that to me. You can't, but we can understand it. There are laws that govern it and other mathematical concepts, and there are objective truths that derive from it. A moral intuition is an a priori understanding of moral concepts. It's not a million miles away from this. Right, so if there exists objective, independent moral truths, which we can all access through our innate moral intuitions, then why are there so many moral disagreements? Why are there so many moral clashes? Why does it feel like moral statements are personal feelings and emotions? Facts are facts. You should not have to disagree over them. Yet, morality has so much disagreement, so many different viewpoints, different opinions, different ways of doing things. How can this be the case if we all share a moral intuition? How can this be the case if there exists moral truth and we can all discover it? To me, it seems far more likely that moral statements are just expressions of emotion. For objective moral facts and a moral intuition to exist, I would expect zero moral disagreements. Firstly, just because disagreements exist does not mean that the objective fact does not. Scientists disagree over things all the time. That doesn't mean that the truth does not exist. Think of it like this. At one time, there was disagreement whether the Earth was the centre of the solar system or not. Some thought the sun revolved around the Earth. Some thought the Earth revolved around the sun. So there was disagreement. Does this mean that there was no truth? Of course not. That's ridiculous. There was truth. It's just that at the time, it was not discovered. So... Just because two people can have a moral disagreement does not eliminate the existence of an objective moral truth. 
Secondly, I think people share more common morality than they disagree. Most core things we consider morally wrong or morally right are shared by nearly all humans. I would truly argue there is more moral agreement than disagreement, or shall we say shared fundamental moral values. And this seems more like moral realism. Even those we consider evil who do these morally evil acts would still not want those acts done to themselves or the people they love, showing they still see those acts as morally wrong. So disagreement in and of itself does not negate the existence of moral facts, and more so to me, there seems to be more moral agreement than disagreement. We do have shared fundamental moral values across humankind, which strongly supports moral objective facts and therefore moral realism. I don't know, I still feel that the existence of objective moral truth with a moral intuition would leave no room for disagreement. Moral disagreement comes from a place of emotion. Moral values seem to be shaped by culture, society and upbringing. These are not the hallmarks of objective truth. Anti-realism seems far more likely. If you enjoyed this video and you have an interest in ethics and you want to help support this channel, then please check out the Philosophy Vibe Ethics and Metaethics ebooks available on Amazon. These two books are a compilation of all our ethics and metaethics scripts, and they will give you a perfect overview on moral philosophy. From utilitarianism to Kantian ethics, from moral skepticism to emotivism, by the end of these two books, you will have a great grasp of all major areas of ethics, and of course, all sales really help out this channel, and we really appreciate it. The links are in the description. But that's all the time we have for now. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the vibe. And what are your thoughts? Who out there is a moral realist and who is an anti-realist? Let us know in the comments below, as well as what you find to be the main arguments for your stance. Don't forget to like and share. And for more philosophical debates and discussions, please subscribe to the channel. Take care, and we look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye-bye.